Now, last year, I've made a video on the real estate death cross where rates and payments are increasing when home prices and activities are dropping, leading to unready buyers pinch with their new purchases. We've since gone into this death cross for the past nine months, with transaction fell to the lowest in January. Many are wondering what kind of trend we are going to be seeing in the future. And so today, I want to make a video to share with you all why I think the real estate is going to see an explosive growth for Canada for 2024 and 25, and why it may be another COVID-esque formal craze. As well, at the end, I'll discuss if now is a good time to buy or not. Keep in mind the following are not financial advice, but my own personal opinion. Now, before we start, make sure you help us hit that like button to support us this way. All right, without further ado, let's jump into today's video. Okay, first, let's look at the supply side. Now, here we have builders facing rising interest rates, persisting labor shortage, and dwindling buyers' interest. Imagine a scale where supply and demand are supposed to balance each other out, which we haven't really seen for many years in Canada. But imagine this scale is now becoming even more increasingly lopsided as housing start takes a nose dive. Housing start is much lower in Vancouver and Ontario this year, with a seasonal adjusted drop of 23 and 29% year on year in July. Now, if we just look at July alone, multi unit urban start decreased by 12%. Canadian Home Builders Association says 67% of the panelists says current environment is causing them to build less, and 22% say outright they're canceling their projects. I've had several clients actually coming back to me saying the developer are canceling the projects and returning all the deposits after a year or a year and a half. Now here is where things get a little bit more complicated. The Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation CMHC has called for 3.5 million new homes by year 2030 to achieve housing affordability, annual completion rate of 500,000 new homes or 125,000 homes per quarter. But what is happening on the ground? Unfortunately, the market is cheering behind this almost impossible target. We aren't even hitting half of the targeted numbers on both start and completion every quarter. And with developers canceling more projects going forward, this is going to further weight down the supply side of our imaginary scale. Now, this isn't just a number game though. Every housing start that doesn't happen represents a home that a potential buyers cannot buy in the future. Moreover, developers don't just switch on the flip and build if interest rate drops tomorrow. They have to take the time to get permits, get the contracts, get the labor in place. So a one to two years of low supply start could mean years of compounding issues in the future. This is the reality we're grappling with right now, and it's a reality that is going to shape the future of the Canadian housing market. Next, let's take a look at the population growth. Now, Canada continues to embrace a welcoming stance towards immigration, extending permanent residency or PL status for half a million people every year. Now, these aren't just any individuals though. Half of the 500k PR belongs to economically productive classes, and these people who are coming in with skills, education, and often decent financial backing, positioning them perfectly as potential buyers in the Canadian real estate. But the economic class is not just it. There is also another 25% of people granting PR belong to the family status. These are the grandparents, parents, etc. Now, these people often come in with substantial cash savings, while some need to borrow to buy their home, many may need little to no mortgages, adding them to the no subject buyers pool in the future, I'm sure. This significantly enriches the pool of the prospective buyers, pushing up the demand in the housing market in the future. Now, I don't know how many units every 500k new permanent residents will need to buy in the future, but let's take a low number and assume 40%. So 200k units every time there's 500k people coming in. Our new start home, as you can see, doesn't even keep up with these demand, never mind local consumptions. These are not just numbers. These are real people coming in with real needs, looking for a real home. I'm 100% supporting immigration. I think it's very important, uh, as I myself is one. But my concern is with the government putting no thoughts on how are they going to house them. But guess what? The issue doesn't just stop here. We are going to see even more pressure on demand because of rent. So let's tackle rent next. Now, in the recent years, Canada has seen a surge in rental costs, averaging an increase of 21% in the last couple of years. You have seen places in Vancouver or Ontario with one bedroom going to two and a half to 3,000 on average. And it's going to keep going up, I think. Two key factors really have played a significant role here. 
Uh, first is the rise and the influx of international students coming in. Now, Canada has a good reputation of world-class education hub, so this has really attracted a lot of people coming in to study. According to website Erudera, here are the numbers of international study permits holders in total in Canada every year. Now, as we can see, this number keeps going up. Other than the drop in 2020, there is a steadily increase of 100 to 150k permits every year. These are new people entering into Canada. While not everyone becomes a PR eventually or even buys a home, one thing is for sure, all of them will have to rent and many of them are not going to just rent student housing, they will be renting outside. So one bedroom or two bedroom near university is going to see a massive upward pressure in rent. The second factor we need to consider are diminishing housing supply like we just talked about with housing start uh, witnessing a substantial downturn, uh, availability of rental properties we know will decline in the future. So this creates a supply and demand imbalance which is uh, even worse than before further intensing the pressure on rental price. It's like a vicious cycle. And as a result of these factors, renters are now finding themselves caught in a very difficult situation. On one hand, the escalating rental costs are making it increasingly difficult for to afford a decent uh, living space. On the other hand, the lack of rental properties is leaving them with limited choice. However, very interestingly, this actually creates a new situation where there is a shift in mentality for many renters. As rental costs continue to rise, they are now approaching the threshold of a mortgage interest payment. This means that for many people, the cost of renting is almost as expensive as owning a home. This realization is leading many renters to consider their housing options. Now, instead of continuing to pay high rent, they're now considering home ownership as a more economically viable option, which sounds kind of crazy with such home price and interest rate. More and more renters who weren't very keen uh, home owners before are now looking to buy. Now this year alone, myself have dealt with at least five clients in this situation where they have seen massive upwards increase in rent and they made the decision, I might as well just own a home right now. This shift is not just changing the dynamics of the housing market, but also amplifying the demand for housing. As rental costs approach mortgage interest payment, it's now time to dive into the other part of the puzzle, which is investor demand. Now imagine a seesaw, on one hand you have high interest rate, and on the other hand you have investor demand. The higher the interest rate, the lower the investor demand and vice versa, this is very obvious. Investors demand are taking a nose dive and for simple reason, it's because of profitability, right? High interest rate means high borrowing costs, which then erodes profitability of condo uh, investments. I'll be very surprised if you can find one that's cash flow positive or even neutral today. So if you factor in maintenance, taxes, condos, it really doesn't make sense to buy any condos right now. However, again, we are at a tipping point right now. There's a sense of expectation, and that is the expectation of future rate cuts. See, interest rate has to cut eventually. We all know that, but rent won't drop. Because see, why would I drop my rent if I can rent to someone for 3,000 in Vancouver, knowing that hundreds and thousands of new international students will be filling in to rent at maybe an even higher price? So what we're seeing right now is a potential resurgence of investor interest in the Canadian condo market. Investors are now waiting in the wings, ready to dive back into the market as soon as interest rate starts to fall. Now speaking of interest rate, let's finally take a look at financing, right? This is a very important aspect. So imagine this, you're a couple right now, let's say 150K combined gross income with a 200K down payment. You're ready to buy a home. But right now with a discouraging rate of 6.5% interest rate, you're limited to really only can buy a home worth about 650k. While this may seem reasonable, consider places like Vancouver, Ontario, what would that really get you with 650k, like maybe a one bedroom? Suddenly the 650k doesn't really stretch very far. High interest rate is really now acting as a significant deterrence for most potential home buyers, limiting their purchasing power and reducing the demand right now. But even a slight movement in interest rate means a whole different story for the home buyers. As we can see, every 1% drop in rate means they're increasing their purchasing power by 48K, which is about 6% of previous price. Or on the other hand, from a cash flow perspective, every 1% drop in interest rate is around $300 less per month on a 500K mortgage roughly 10% more in the cash flow. And the thing is, we know that this high rate won't last, 
because interest rate is not sustainable in these level for any economy. It's not good for business. It's not good for personal. It's not good for the government to borrow more in the future. Now, you may also say that, well, inflation is still going very strong. It's a long way from that 2% target. So, you know, cuts won't happen anytime soon. But that's actually not true because cuts needs to happen well before we hit that inflation target or else we're going to risk going into deflation, which is much worse to the economy. So even if inflation does not fall back all the way to normal until 2025 or 26, rate cuts are likely to happen slowly a year before that, as soon as we see a clear trend heading to that direction. Personally, I expect rate cuts to happen no later than end of 2024. And finally, there are two honorable mentions that will contribute to another potential FOMO. The first is pent up demand. So many of you are actually ready to buy. They, they could, but they just can't right now because of rates. So as soon as rate cuts happen, they will jump into it. The second one is actually FHSA or First Home Saving Account, which is new this year. Now, everyone can put aside $8,000 per year and take it all tax-free for their first home, including growth. This doesn't seem much right now, but 2025, if you have max every year starting right now, a couple in a 30% tax bracket reinvesting all their refunds into a TFSA growing at 5% a year could mean that each can take out 35,000 more and 70K total for year five. Now, if you combine that with the 35K of RRSP they have in their home buyer's plan, if they take out everything together, they would have about 140K in down payment ready. That's a 20% down in the 700K home. So we will be seeing as years go by, these new home buyers can afford a higher and higher purchase price for their homes because their you know, down payment is really growing at a much faster pace because of FHSA. So while this will help new home buyers get into the first home faster, I do see this contribute to a much higher bidding price in the near future when these FHSA takes a couple of years to really accumulate and to a substantial amount. All right, so in conclusion, let's look at this, right? This is what I'm seeing. We have lower and diminishing supply housing start with a huge influx of very capable buyers needing little to no borrowing power likely. We know that rent is going to continue to go higher due to supply issue in the national students leading to investors eyeing the uh, condo market coming back in, which pushed demand further. And so now with high rent, more renters want to be homeowners if they can. And eventually there will be a shift in the interest rate fueling pent up demand uh, because of uh, people that are waiting to buy an average let's say i don't see any scenarios on how the housing price won't be going up in the near future i think this is especially true for condo market because a lot of the factors i mentioned in this video really aim towards the one two or three bedroom units now while increase in condo prices will push up detach as well there is still a large enough gap between the big condo and a small detach so that not as many buyers can really just make that jump across so finally, let's really talk about, in that case, then should I just jump in right now? Should I just buy a home? Because, you know, according to Jackie, it's going to go up quite a bit in the next two years. Well, my answer is yes and no, um, because it's actually more complicated than that right now. If you're buying a home for self-use and you're planning to stay there for at least five plus year or a long time, I would say you should buy as long as you're ready. But in these times, being ready might mean a whole different thing than just simply having the mortgage uh, borrowing power or the down payment ready. Right now, one of the biggest worry I have with every client that are looking to buy right now is their job security. Across many sectors, especially tech and also maybe in the film industry with the right to strike, there's a lot of people worrying being laid off basically i have clients you know going from uh, full-time to half time they still have a job but they're getting paid half as much so if you're going to buy right now the one of the most important thing is make sure either your job is iron clad there's no way you're getting fired in the next 6 to 12 months or else you better have enough extra padding for your emergency fund and i'm talking about at least probably 9 to 12 months in spending including the mortgage, condo, strata, all that stuff ready, assuming you may be out of work for that long. I don't think so. I hope not, but you better be safe than sorry with the current environment. Now, as for investors, um, should I be buying right now? I personally, I, I'm still not a fan of buying because I don't like to buy into something knowing the cash flow is going to be negative for sure. And then speculating that the massive increase in price in the future is going to give me all that gains while right now I'm still negative every month contributing to it for that hope of jump in price. To me, that's just not a good investment in general. 
If you really want real estate exposure, I, I'm going to suggest you look into things like apartment REIT. And if you're saying, what about leverage? This is really the most powerful thing about real estate, right? Well, you can leverage anywhere. You can borrow to invest in stocks or even REITs. I'm not telling you to borrow, but I'm just saying the concept of leveraging is not unique to just buying a home. All right, so that's why I have to say about the real estate market for 2024 and 25. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you think house prices is going to see a significant increase or you actually think it's going to drop? Let me know in the comment down below and show me your research. Tell me why you think that way. Other than that, if you like these kind of videos, I do upload them every two weeks right now, um, every Tuesday or, or Friday, depending on my work schedule. So make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, click the bell button so you get all the notifications in the future. All right, this is Jackie Ko. I hope you found this interesting. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.